Alright, welcome to part 3 of my video series on how to build your own scratch built plane. In my last video, I showed you how to download your PDF plans and then also how to cut your foam pieces out for the plane. But in this video, I'm going to be building the whole plane from start to finish and basically showing you how to glue everything together. And I'm going to be using hot glue because it's so much quicker and so I'm going to be using that for the video. In part 4, I'm going to be showing you how to install your electronics like your motor, battery, speed control, receiver. But again, in this video, I'm just going to be covering the entire build, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue the two wing halves together. So I'm just going to take the glue gun and run a small bead of glue all the way along the edge. I want to try to do this as quick as possible so the glue doesn't have time to cool by the time you get done gluing it together. Then, you just slide it together on the table, or this is what I do. And you want to make sure that it doesn't glue right to the table as well, so I just like to slide it just a little bit while it's drying. Hold it together tightly, make sure all the edges are even. It's pretty good right there. And sometimes, even if they're not perfectly even, I found that it doesn't really matter. And it should be pretty good. So once the glue is done drying, you should have your main wing here. So now it's time to glue on the nose piece. And this is just the basic frame. The 3D nose is going to go around that, obviously. But right now we're going to start gluing that. Again, run a bead of glue all the way along the foam where you're going to be gluing it together. Then just slide it into place like that. Again, making sure not to glue it onto the table. So just slide the, the whole um, frame a little bit on the table while it's drying. So once you've got your three main pieces glued together, it's time to put on the elevons. Now, unlike the rest of the plane, we can't just glue these straight on because we're going to have to set them so that they can go up and down like that. So we're going to have to create some sort of hinge. So instead of gluing these elevons on, we're actually going to be taping them on because if we just try to glue two pieces of foam together then they can't obviously can't go up and down because it's stuck there with glue. So we're going to have to take our tape and just put some tape right over the hinge there so now it can go like that but it won't be able to go down because of that right angle joint right there. So we're going to have to make a, nine, a 45 degree cut on either one of those um, edges to make it look like this. So now it can bend up and down. And that's how we're going to make our hinge for the elevon and that's how we're going to control the plane. So all we need to make the hinge is a ruler or yardstick and a knife. So basically what we're going to do is take our elevon and then lay the ruler right along the edge make sure it's nice and even there and then take our knife hold it at a 45 degree angle As you can see there just stick it in the foam go all the way down and now when we take foam out there we cut We have a perfectly, or it doesn't have to be perfect, but an angled piece of foam. As you can see, that's not quite enough, but it should work. Again, we're just going to take our ruler like that and go all the way down. Try to go at a, uh, a little bit more steep angle this time. Now since I've cut a 45 degree angle on the elevon and also on the plane, it's time to tape the elevon onto the plane. So I'm going to sit right there, grab a piece of the fiberglass reinforced hinge tape, maybe about that long, then I'm going to just Hold it in place 
and place the tape right along the hinge line there. And now, oops, and now as you can see, we have a hinge line for the top that goes up and down both ways. We're also going to want to put a piece of tape on the bottom right there. So once both of your elevons are hinged, ready to go, after I flip the plane around, we're going to be getting into servos again. Now servos are what control your plane, and they're going to do that by controlling the angle of your elevon, and that's going to be controlling uh, the direction of your plane. We're basically just going to be gluing them right onto the foam, then your push rod is going to be connecting to your servo and also to your elevon. It's going to connect to your elevon by connecting to a control horn, which is going to be glued right onto your elevon or stuck stuck right in there. Now, I didn't mention this in my first video because they're pretty simple and um, I normally make my own, but I bought these. They're basically just a piece of plastic or wood with some holes in it, or one hole normally, and they just glue right into place and that's where the other end of your push rod is going to connect to. So before we just start gluing servos right onto the foam randomly we're going to have to know exactly how far away from the elevon to put them. So to do that we're going to be attaching the push rod onto the servo arm first before we glue it down. To do that we're going to have to make what's called a Z-bend like I have here and that way it will be able to slide it right into the, under the servo arm and then twist it and it'll be right in place which I'll show you later. So for this part you're going to need a needle nose pliers like I showed in the first video and you're going to take your push rod and just take your needle nose pliers put it right on the end of it and then just bend it at a right angle kind of blurry at a perfect right angle like that then maybe a little bit over a right angle then take your needle nose pliers bend it the opposite way right back on itself and you might have to straighten it out a little bit and as you can see I have a rough Z bend this one's a little bit better but just so you know how it looks that's, that's how it's supposed to look okay so to put your um, push rod into your servo arm you're going to want to put it in like that, swivel it around. That's going to allow it to swivel freely back and forth, just like that. And as you can see, I did make the top hole bigger with my um, X-Acto knife earlier because most of the time your push rods are not going to fit into the holes that come with the servo. So now that we've got our servo set up with the push rod going all the way down to the elevon, it's time to install our control horns which are going to stick into the foam and the clevis is going to attach onto the control horn so I'm going to want my control horn about right there so I'm going to go ahead take my knife make a little slit then so I can just stick my control horn right into the foam fits perfectly I'll just test it out here Snap my push rod in there. Fits about right. Take it out again here. So I'm going to take my hot glue. Just put a little bit there. Stick the control horn back in. And it's good to go. Once you've got both control horns in and your servos connected, then you'll be able to see how it works. And so your servo arm is going to be moving back and forth. That's going to make your elevon go up and down. So, we move the servo arm. That's how your control surface moves. Now I'm going to glue the servo down. I'm just going to make sure the servo is nice and lined up right where I want it. I'm going to take my pen and just draw the outline or a few of the corners at least of the servo so I know exactly where it goes. Just right there. Then take my hot glue and put... now you don't want to put too much. You don't need as much as you think. 
with just a small blob of glue there. I'll make sure my servo is lined up with the edges. Press it down gently. And now, got my servo permanently in place until my plane is destroyed. Okay, so now we're done with the servos and we're going to get to carbon fiber tubes. Now, you're actually supposed to install these before we start with the servos, but I kind of forgot, so yeah. Alright, so we're going to lay our carbon as even as we can. Try to get it right in the center. Then we're going to take our pen, make a little mark right on the end right there, either side. And then I like to make maybe make a mark along the way, maybe two marks, depending how long a ruler I have. I'll take my carbon out, yardstick or ruler, and then just trace along the dotted line that you made. Cut. And make sure you only cut halfway through, just like we did with the score folding in my last video. But just barely going halfway through the foam, lightly scoring it all the way down to the mark you made. Then you're going to take your ruler. What I like to do is just go around the line that you cut and make a mark two millimeters but roughly two millimeters away from that edge. So this time I'm going to cut about two millimeters away. Now I'm going to take a screwdriver and just go right along the valley that I cut and pluck out all the excess foam that's in there. And as you can see, it makes a nice valley where your carbon rod is going to sit in. It's going to go all the way down. Then you're going to want to do the same thing with the elevators. Just take a pen, mark the ends here. Go right along there and just cut right along there. And then once I'm once I made the first cut, I'm basically just going to move the the ruler over roughly two millimeters. Make another cut, and then it's gonna, then I'm going to pluck out the foam like I showed earlier. Cutting all the grooves for each piece of carbon. So I'll take my glue gun and run a bead of glue all the way down the groove uh, take my piece of carbon lay it right in there then I like to grab a piece of scrap foam maybe and use that to press down so I don't burn my fingers from the hot glue that also makes it nice and even nice and flush on there and now with that carbon rod right down in the foam like that it'll keep this foam from breaking and it'll keep all the flex out alright so now I've got all my carbon my servos done and as you can see here when I move one servo the control surface moves that's obviously how the plane is going to be controlled and then the carbon fiber rods or tubes really help with the strength of the wings and it can't bend or flex near as much as it could. As you can see, it's almost straight. And it'll also keep it from breaking, especially back here in the weak spots. Alright, so our next step is going to be installing the nose frame. And that's going to be your vertical piece that slides right into your nose. Now, the main thing is keeping um, the bottom of your plane facing down. So the servos and carbon fiber of the plane are going to be face down while you're installing it. So we're basically just going to try to get the fit in there, slide it back, 
It'll be kind of hard to get it perfect, but you just kind of have to force it and make sure not to break anything. And then, as you can see, this piece notches right in there. So to glue it down, I like to take a pen and make a mark all the way along there. Now when I move this to the side, I can, I, I can know exactly where to place the glue. So then I just go right along that line. And now, put it right back where it was, right even with the line. Hold it there a little bit while it's drying. Alright, so now I'm going to be gluing in the nose braces. So I'm just going to put glue on the end here. And I'll throw in the notch right there. Just slide in place. Hold it right against the edge there. And on the bottom. Okay, now that I'm done installing all four nose braces, it's time to install the 3D nose pieces. And those, these two pieces are going to go around the nose, fold all the way around. This one's going to go on the bottom, and that's going to create the nose. Now, we've, I've already score folded these in part two, so all we're going to do is, is go along like this and break it right where I cut halfway through. And now we have a fold, just like that. And then that's going to fit right over the plane. But, that's not really strong in there right where it's folding, so we're going to take some tape, just put a piece right inside the fold. So, take this piece, put it along in there, and now, now that's really strong right there, there's tape on that side, same with this, and with this. Alright, now that I've got my nose piece taped and folded, I'm just going to set it right on the top where it's going to be, kind of get the feel of where it's going to be sitting. I'm going to take my pen, I'm going to trace around this part. So now I'm going to take the glue, and glue right along the inside of the lines that I traced. I'm going to put my nose piece, set it right on top, make sure it's even. Now that that's dried, I'm just going to take my glue gun, run an extra bead of glue. And that way, it'll make sure that it stays in place. Okay, once your back part is done, we're going to glue the nose together, or the top part of the nose. So, we're going to put a bunch of glue along in here, in the front and on that brace in there and then we're just going to hold the nose together like this while it's drying so you want to make sure everything fits together and you know how to hold everything together before you start putting glue on it because this is kind of the tricky part because it seems like it doesn't really want to fit but if you just kind of hold it together then it should work perfectly fine So. I'm just gonna, since I have glue in there, I'm gonna hold it together. But that's just the way it is. And now, I'm gonna push it together and let it dry. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of tape and then put a, a bit more glue all the way along the edge here. Gonna fill the whole gap with glue, take my tape, and pull it together 
really tight. Okay, so now that it's done drying, take the tape off like this. And now I have a really nice glued nose. Perfect. So I'm going to turn the plane around. Now we're going to do the bottom piece. All the way along here. And then on each side of the, of the braces. I'll take the bottom nose piece, set it right in place. I'm just going to hold that in place while that part dries. And again, I did put some tape on there just to help it dry. That way um, it'll hold it in place just while the glue is dry. Alright, now that I'm done gluing both the top and bottom nose piece, all that's left to do is glue those uh, gaps together. I'm just going to take my glue and just hold it together while it's drying. Alright, so now that we've got the entire nose finished, everything's glued together, solid. It's time to put the bottom part of the plane or fuselage. So first of all, we're going to glue this piece under there and get it fit. Take our glue gun. I just like to put some glue on there, and that keeps it nice and sturdy. So for our main piece here, of the, of the bottom fuselage, you're going to have to uh, score fold this, which we you probably should have done in part two, and then um, put tape along the back side of it, then also tape on the battery hatch. When you're trying to get this to fit onto your plane, into those notches, one thing I've noticed is the back is supposed to go right in in between right there it's supposed to go in into there but the space isn't big enough so you're gonna have to cut a um, just a little bit of the edge of the foam off all the way back to give it some more space so as you can see I took quite a bit of foam off and now it fits right into place and as you can see there's a little gap in between there but just make sure it's not touching the elevon basically glue it against this part of the plane and I kind of forgot to mention this, but you can use your assembly guide um, at any p time during the build just to help you um, see how everything fits together. And this actually helps a lot. It shows all your pieces. And if you have a problem fitting something together, your assembly guide can definitely help. Alright, so I'm done gluing both sides of the bottom fuselage. Everything's glued on nice. But you want to remember to put extra glue right along those edges, as well as right in there where this thing meets the plane. Alright, so now I'm going to be gluing these onto this square piece of foam. As you can see, I messed up a little bit ago, so I'll try to do it better this time. Take my glue gun, put some glue along there, and this is going to glue right on top of that. Alright, so finally I'm done gluing that together. The main thing is to try to keep this part straight so, so it doesn't flex back and forth when you're gluing. You can see there's a battery hatch where we'll be accessing the electronics, and we'll get to that in part four. But right now, we're going to do the last part of the build, and that is doing the rudders. So before you glue your rudders in, it's a good idea to slide them in and just see how it's going to look. And probably one will be more angled than the other one. So what you're going to want to do is maybe hold this one up while, it's, while the glue is drying. So if I go around here... we can see that this rudder is slanted just a little bit more. So while, I'm, while the glue is drying, I'm going to have to be holding this rudder just over just a little bit to make them bo both exactly um, the same.
right, now we're done with the entire build of the F-22 version 2 from RC Powers. So stay tuned for part 4 of these video series if you want to see how to install all your electronics like your motor, battery, all that. Also how to set up your remote so you can control it in mid-flight. And also how to glue in your motor mount, um, set up your magnets for your battery hatches, and your Velcro, all that stuff. So if you want to see more, stay tuned for part 4.